My name is Leah Katzer, and I'm the Statewide Program Director here at JA of Washington. We're so excited you could join us this afternoon for our Lunch with Leaders series. I'm going to give a quick introduction, and then today's leader will share their story for about 15 minutes, and then we'll have about 10 minutes of questions at the end. Please feel free to put your questions in the chat box to me, the host, during the session, and then I will share them out with our leader later in the session when we get to that point. Um, educators and parents, please put a note in the chat box to let me know how many students are joining you so we can actually um, accurately track our attendees today. So our session today is generally generously sponsored by Luther Burbank Savings. Luther Burbank Savings has supported junior achievement for more than two decades in California and we're thrilled to be now partnering with them in Washington. Thanks to the generosity of this partnership, we will be picking two educators who are joining us today to receive gift cards as a token of our continued appreciation for your partnership with JA. Um, so I'm gonna hand it off to Ken Jackson, who is the Vice President and Branch Manager at Luther Burbank Savings in Bellevue to introduce our leader today. Uh, good afternoon. As Leah mentioned, I'm Ken Jackson, Vice President and Branch Manager at Luther Burbank Savings located here in Bellevue, Washington. We're proud to sponsor this exciting series because Jay's passion and commitment to providing an engaging financial literacy curriculum is equal to our own, which makes partnering with Jay a natural fit for Luther Burbank Savings and its employees. I am pleased to be able to introduce Nabra Nelson, who is the Director of Arts Engagement at the Seattle Repertoire Theater. Nabra, I'll hand it off to you. Thank you so much, Ken. Thank you all. Thank you, Junior Chief in Washington for having me. I'm so excited to talk to y'all. Um, I'll start by um, talking about what my current job is and then um, take you through my career journey. Um, and I'm excited to answer all of your questions. Um, so Director of Arts Engagement is a bit of a nebulous term. So what I actually do is I run the Community Engagement and Education uh, Department at Seattle Rep, which is a big theater here in Seattle. Um, it's a, what's called a regional theater, which means that it's supposed to serve the whole region. Um, we put on plays and musicals and develop new works. And we also, uh, through my work, put on classes, workshops, discussions, um, all types of things. And we're located in the Seattle Center. Uh, so what I do is um, a lot of youth programs with in-school and after-school programs. I wonder if anybody has has had Seattle Rep teaching artists out there in their class, put that in the chat or shout it out. I'd love to know who's already interacted with us. Um, and if you haven't, ask your teacher to reach out to us so that we can bring a teaching artist to your classroom. Uh, and we also have after school programs for youth um, that have to do with theater, of course. Uh, and then I also craft the experience that an audience member has when they come into the theater. So when you come into our lobby, there's like information about the production and um, about local organizations that have to do with the themes of the production. There's a listening station where you can listen to a playlist I made uh, about the, that kind of has to do with the production. There's local art. Um, and then after a lot of our shows, we have discussions, we have workshops, sometimes singing and dancing workshops, sometimes discussions about really important topics in our community. Uh, that have to do with the play. And then I also do kind of events outside of our theater um, at community centers, at of course schools and things like that. Um, and that collaborate with community organizations and leaders and artists to uh, kind of expand the themes of our plays um, and connect them to our local community and what's important here. So I do a lot of things. That's a little snapshot of what I do currently. And I also, outside of that work, I'm a freelance director and playwright uh, in the theater. And freelance, I'll be using that term a lot. Um, it means that I kind of do gigs sometimes. So sometimes I'll have a show that I'm directing. Uh, sometimes there will be a big gap before I direct another show. It kind of has to do with the opportunities as they present themselves. And some people are full-time freelancers in the theater. And that means that they kind of puzzle piece together all these different gigs and uh, little uh, short-term jobs throughout the year to create their, their year of work versus what I do most of the time is I'm full-time. So I work in the theater all the time in my position as community director of arts engagement. And then I also do some of those gigs sometimes when I 
when I have a bit of extra time and when the opportunity presents itself. So I started in theater going way back in sixth grade uh, because my uh, teacher and my mom said that I was talked a lot and I liked to express myself so I should try out for the school play. So I did. And then I was in like, every play um, at school until, until I graduated. I really just loved acting. Um, and then I really developed my craft in high school, actually. I went to, for some context, I went uh, fifth grade through uh, 12th grade. I was in Cairo, Egypt for school. Um, that's where I lived. Uh, before that, I was in Los Angeles. And so uh, it was a little bit different, I think, than the schooling here in the United States. Uh, one thing was that the school's really small, my high school. It was uh, a K through 12 school and the high school itself was 500 kids. And my graduating class was 130. Uh, so I think that's much smaller than what's usually in America, but I know a lot of folks are joining us from a lot of different places. So if you go to a smaller school, you know, take that as an opportunity. I really took that as an opportunity. I got a lot more autonomy, got to try new things. I did everything in theater. I did lighting design, I did sound design, I did backstage stuff on stage. And I got to direct a full length play when I was in 11th grade, when I had no experience, which was really exciting. Um, we had like 30 zombies in the play. It was a really fun play to do. <laughs> um, and once I started directing in 11th grade, I knew that that's what I wanted to do. Um, I didn't, I kind of didn't care for acting as much. Um, so when I started applying for colleges, um, you know, I was more focused on directing the other thing I started exploring in high school that I really loved and found a passion for was physics. I love physics. It's, I think it's a very creative science, helped me understand the world around me and it connected to kind of the problem solving aspects of directing where you only get a few tools, uh, a few equations and you have to, you're, every, every, you're presented with all new problems every time to try to solve with those tools that you've learned. That's the exact same as directing in theater. And so when I, uh, I applied to colleges, mostly in the United States, cause you know, I was ready to leave Egypt after eight years. And, um, and they just have better programs as well for theater and physics here in America. And I ended up going to the University of California, Santa Barbara. And I entered there as undecided. And before I started my first classes, I declared my major as physics. Uh, because, you know, I had been doing theater since I was nine years old. And I thought, you know, maybe I'm a little bit burnt out. Um, maybe this is just something I like to do for fun. I don't know if I want to do this for a career. And I really love physics. So I'm going to try that and see if that, that works out for me. And I'm really, really glad I made that decision. Because what it taught me was that even though I was doing physics in classes my first year, Everything other than class was theater. I joined two theater companies at my university um, and was doing, they were identity-based um, activist focused theater companies that I really loved. And all my time was spent outside of classes spent doing theater. And so I thought, okay, well, I can't get away from this. This is clearly really something I'm passionate about and something that will be with me my whole life. So. My second year of college, I declared a double major in physics and theater, and then I ended up um, majoring physics and getting my minor, I mean, majoring in theater and getting my minor in physics uh, because I didn't want to spend another semester in university to get my double major. So I just got my major in theater and let it be at that. Because at that point, I kind of, after four years, I realized that I, I was going to have a career in theater. Um, that some other things that, that I think were important to my career journey in university is that I tried a ton of things that had nothing to do with, with either of my majors. Um, I took whatever classes I kind of caught my fancy. Um, if I was interested, I really wanted to read uh, some James Joyce. So I took a class on James Joyce, which is an Irish, uh, writer and this is just super random. Uh, I went and I, I studied abroad in South Korea and while I was there I took all East Asian studies classes which were amazing and really important to me in my kind of learning journey in the future. Um, I was a resident assistant at, my, at a dorm at, while I was in college. I also started, I was a teaching artist 
for a class in my senior year. Um, and that started kind of getting me to, into educational theater more, which is also what I do. Uh, so trying a whole ton of things out was really integral to kind of all the, to, to, to figuring out what I really, really wanted to do and feeling really strong in my career journey by the time that I left uh, college. So um, my senior year, I got my first uh, professional theater gig. My professor and mentor uh, was uh, directing a, a show at a regional theater in Denver and she invited me to be her assistant director. So I took a quarter off of college um, and she helped me figure that out. And I went and assistant directed her over in Denver and that was really huge. I got a lot of connections in the regional theater. Um, and then after, you know, um, after college, I had been applying to a bunch of different residency and fellowships and internships uh, because I, um, you'll see this as a theme. I was always between, do I want like the stability of something a little bit more long-term like a like a year long internship or fellowship or a full-time job or do I want to go into the freelance uh, world of art where you're just trying to get a bunch of gigs and and piecing that all together and throughout my career journey I chose the more stable path and that was just a personal choice I think either one would have worked and it works for a lot of different artists um, but I decided, you know, I wanted to do some type of directing uh, internship or fellowship. So I applied to a whole ton of things all over the country. Um, and I ended up doing an internship at Santa Cruz Shakespeare, uh, which was assistant directing a, a show. And then right after that, I went to Milwaukee Repertory Theater in Wisconsin uh, and, direct, and did a year long directing residency there. Um, and in Milwaukee, uh, that was really that was a, a huge turning point in my career. I had never been to the Midwest for some context. I didn't know where Milwaukee was. And I was really looking for just what opportunities are going to be best for my personal growth and my professional growth. And also what will pay me something because I needed to sustain myself. Um, and so Milwaukee Rep was a really amazing opportunity. And so I just went off to the Midwest um, and, and started a whole new journey, um, which I find very exciting. I wasn't afraid by that at all. Um, and while I was there, they had just started their community engagement department the same year that I arrived. And um, because of my work in kind of activist focused theater at my university, I, I was really interested in community organizing and community engagement in the arts. And so um, I, kind of helped out with their, with their events and they ended up hiring me part-time to do uh, a major program while I was doing my residency. And then they ended up hiring me full-time in the community engagement department after my residency was over. And that was another uh, situation where I was applying to more directing fellowships. And then I also had this full-time job offer. And I decided instead of going kind of the more freelance direction of being a director and an artist, I decided to kind of settle into a more stable full-time arts administration position. Um, and that really led me to where I am now. I, at a, about three years after do, in that position, I'm a lucky rep. I wanted a little bit more autonomy. I wanted to also move closer to my family here on the West Coast. And um, this job presented itself um, around when I was ready to make that shift, uh, a little bit earlier than I expected, but it was still worked out really, really well. And um, I applied to this job and I got this job, which was really lovely. Um, but I also continued uh, and still am continuing to do freelancing on the side. So I'm still a director. I still write plays and workshop those plays with other theater companies around town. I also started a couple of theater companies in Milwaukee. I helped start a woman of color theater company um, that the, there wasn't a space like that in Milwaukee at the time. And here I'm hoping to start a Middle Eastern North African focused theater company, which again, doesn't really exist here in Seattle yet. Um, so uh, what really is my drive is always community engagement, even in my directing, in my writing, in creating companies uh, that I've created. Uh, it's all about building community, bringing people together, 
um, highlighting incredible artists and community leaders and the work that's being done in our community, um, inspiring others to create their own art and make their voices heard is really important to me. And just kind of having fun and uh, around a important cause uh, is really important. It's, it's, all about, it's all about engaging and creating community uh, in all the work that I do. And I guess the kind of thing I would leave you with is a little piece of advice, I guess, would be really to follow your instincts and follow what the universe offers you. I always, you know, applied to a bunch of different things, kind of had maybe two different paths that I was equally pursuing. And then in the end, I, I kind of followed my gut and what, what felt right at the time. Uh, and what, sometimes it was a really difficult decision, deciding how to maneuver my career path. But, um, but I think it turned out in, you know, amazing. I love where I am right now. And I'm sure that I think that in 10 years, 20 years, I'm going to probably be somewhere I absolutely can't expect. But, um, but if you really follow that intuition and you, uh, and you take offers, they come and you say yes to what the universe is giving you, uh, you'll go down something that, that is led by your gut and your passion. That's my story. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Uh, so folks, if you have some questions that you'd like me to share with Nabra, please put them in the chat box to me. Um, and some folks did submit questions when they signed up. So I'll get started with those. Um, for young people who are interested in pursuing a career in the arts, what kind of degrees or training would you recommend they look into? Yeah, I think there are kind of two paths to go when you are pursuing a career in the arts. Um, one of them is like the formal education path, which is the way I went. Um, if you're interested in that, um, you know, you can go into a liberal arts college or university that in which you will, like I did, in which you will learn your craft, but you'll also have opportunities to learn a whole bunch of different things. As I said, like I took a lot of physics, of course, but I also took a whole ton of classes in a whole ton of different um, uh, fields. And that was great for me because I, I consider myself a multidisciplinary artist. And um, I also did a lot of administration. There were just a lot of opportunities that worked really well for me. You can also go into a um, conservatory program in which you're basically just doing your art. Like uh, ballet conservatories are really well known. Um, uh, yeah, dance is like a, a place where you can really focus in, but also acting. Lot, there are lots of conservatories for all types of things. And that, that's where, you know, if you were like, this is all I want to do is, you know, paint 24 hours a day, um, go for it. Like go to a conservatory and paint 24 hours a day and follow that passion. Um, and then you can, there's the non-formal education. For, oh, and one more thing when it comes to picking uh, programs, especially if you're going to a liberal arts university or a non-conservatory, Something that was really integral to my experience was that my professors were also working in their field. Uh, so I, for instance, I got to assistant direct with this professor who directs all over the country. She's directed at Seattle Rep before. Um, and, and that gave me really practical, real world experience. Um, she, um, they, all the professors really like taught me about the business of the art in addition to the craft of it. And that's, I think, really, really important. So to look into like, what is the background of the professors there? Um, and, and are they like working in the field or are they purely teachers? Um, and I would maybe lean towards like people who know the business because that's gonna be the difficult kind of missing piece for a lot of artists after you leave a training program. And then there's the non-formal education route, which I am totally in support of. I don't think all artists are made for university or college, maybe don't tell your, your parents I told you this, but uh, my brother, for instance, is a perfect example of this. He is a visual artist. He, he actually does all, basically all art forms. He's a musician, graphic designer, videographer, um, very artistic mind um, that really doesn't work within structures very well. Um, and so he went to university because he felt like he had to, and he struggled, he changed universities a whole ton. He changed majors a bunch. 
he really struggled to get to just finish his degrees and it took him seven years. Um, and in the end, he was like, that was not worth it. Um, I should have just made my art. He was an incredible artist um, right out of high school. And um, that just the way his mind works, um, I think going straight into the field would have worked better for him. And so the other, that path is really to kind of jump into the field, try to get fellowships, internships, um, be a freelancer, just get gigs, depending on what your art is, um, and just jump into work uh, and, and do a whole ton of art in the process so that you're doing your own learning um, that, that you're missing maybe from those training programs. Great, thank you. That's a perfect segue to my next question. Um, for young folks trying to get their foot in the door, you mentioned internships, um, just getting exposure, what are some ways that they can um, explore those opportunities or find those opportunities? That's a great question. Uh, there are millions, millions of ways. So um, the first thing I would say is that your teachers are your first, are your, the first go-to. They probably have a lot of connections in their, their artist field. They have their own career story and they can really be mentors. The thing about artists, especially if they're artists and teachers, is that we like so deeply want young people to be interested in art and are so excited to mentor people. So uh, whatever field you're interested in, talk to your teacher that's in that field and say, I'm interested in this. Um, will you like help me out in figuring out how, what to do that's right for me? Um, I, I love um, internships and formal programs. There are uh, programs for like youth, uh, middle, high school youth, as well as um, college and up. You know, there's there's kind of um, programs that are a few months or a year long uh, that are that have kind of a container that you can apply to um, all over the place um, in any city you want to live in. In this in Seattle, there's a whole ton of opportunities. So, you know, researching arts internships and fellowships, uh, you'll probably have a lot that you can apply to in your fields. Um, you can just also just finding mentors and connecting with artists that you're interested in is going to serve you really well in the future. Uh, I'm sure lots of people have said this, but like networking and connections is super important and it's really important in art as well because artists are, are a community in a lot of ways, especially when it comes to the business of, of, of being an arts business person, because eventually you'll have to do that if that's your, gonna be your career field. Um, and so a lot of people have just like emailed me and been like, hey, can I just like, can we get coffee or virtual coffee or whatever? And um, can I learn, hear more about your, your art? And can I, can I ask some questions about myself as a community organizer and an art maker and I want to marry those two things and how can I do that and so reaching literally just email reach out to people that you find in the local community in your local community or neighboring communities that you can be like can I just get to know you and create that connection um, and they might be like oh you know who you really need to know is this friend of mine who's an artist who does exactly what you want to do and that's how you're going to kind of grow those pathways that are really specific to you. Perfect, thank you. Um, for other theater entrepreneurs, folks who wanna get into freelancing, um, how did you get your first job? How did you get your first freelancing gig? Is it kind of similar to the advice you had just given? That is a great question. Yes, actually the fir my first freelance gig it was purely because it was because of that networking. What I ended up doing, um, I mean, really like my first one is because of, was through my professor, uh, assistant directing her. So that was really from the same thing that I said is that I, I, I went to her office hours and was like, hey, I have no agenda. Like, I just wanna get to know you. What, what do you love directing? You know, what's this business all about? And she became like a really integral mentor in my career. Um, so that connection was really my very first one. But my first like professional gig in Milwaukee uh, was because as soon as I got to Milwaukee, it was a brand new city to me, as I said, I like emailed like a whole ton of 
people, theater makers. I asked like some of my colleagues and people like that I had quickly became friends with, like who should I get to know in this community that's just like amazing and, and does like especially activist based theater, theater and like women's theater and things like that. And they connected me with all these people. And I went and had coffee with them. Again, no agenda. Like I was not trying to get a gig from them. I was just like, I wanna get to know you, I'm new here. And they were all so generous. Artists are so generous. And um, it was from uh, connecting with a women's theater company um, that I got like really close to because I just loved their mission. And I like went to all their plays and I just, I had coffee with, with every single staff member. And eventually they were like, we love your philosophy, you know, is it, we have this this per, this uh, new works program is there a new work that you're really passionate about and I was like yes there's a new work I'm passionate about so I sent them a, a script and they were like okay you want to direct this and I was like yes I want to direct this uh, and so a, a lot of times with art I think especially with theater um, you don't really have you can't really show your product very very easily. Um, it's not like in visual art you have a portfolio so people know exactly what they're going to get from you. Um, in theater, everything's going to be different. And so it has a lot to do with your philosophy as an artist. And I think that's actually true across art fields, but especially performing arts, your philosophy and where you're coming from is going to be what attracts people to you. Um, and there's always going to be a set, a, a, you know, a leap of trust that they're going to have to to have to have in you. They did, hadn't seen my directing before because I was new to Milwaukee. And, and of course it was, you know, my first gig, how do you get that? It's because they really believed in my philosophy. Um, I'm very interested in international theater, especially African theater. Um, I'm really interested in, um, in representation, especially of people of color on stage. I love new works. Uh, so I love the process of creating new works. And I explained that my, my process as a director is very ensemble based. So I'm very much about bringing people into my process. I'm not about being, you know, the con controlling or hierarchical any, any way. It's all about uh, illuminating all of the voices and brilliance in the room with me. And they were attracted to that philosophy versus attracted to some other thing they've seen me do. Um, so be really cognizant of what is your philosophy as an artist? Why do you do art? What fuels you? What kind of art do you love? Um, and why do you love that art? And that's what will make people give you that first opportunity. Thank you. Uh, another question here is, what is your favorite like genre or type of play to direct? That's a great question. Uh, I said a little bit about it uh, just a second ago, but I love new works, uh, brand new plays. Uh, I love the process of working with a playwright to uh, kind of find what they want to work on and, and really get to know their process. Um, and I love uh, plays that illuminate uh, international um, and you know, POC experiences especially of course, places that deal with my identities. I am half Nubian Egyptian and half Euro-American. And so um, plays from the African, Middle Eastern, um, Arab perspective, I'm really interested in because I think they're not told enough. And I would love to tell those stories because I have those stories inside of me. Um, and also um, narratives that empower women uh, are important to me because yeah, I've, I've done a lot of, of women's theater and I think that it's just quality stuff. Uh, so yeah, and the other thing about new works is I love things that are like a little bit experimental in some way. So that like living room play where it's just really kind of linear and, you know, a normal play that you would think of, uh, you know, a lot of Shakespeare plays are kind of just like linear and they have this arc. Those are great, but I'm more interested in something that, that tries something new with the art form. Uh, so I get to play a little bit more. Wonderful, thank you, I appreciate that. Um, I am not super familiar with the art, so I missed your um, noting of what type of plays you like, so I apologize, I appreciate you repeating. <laughs> um, so we are just at our half hour mark, and so um, I want to say thank you so much um, for everyone for joining us this afternoon. Thank you, Nabra, for your time and expertise in Penn and Luther Burbank Savings for your support of this program. I've put a feedback survey link in the chat box. If students could please take a few minutes to complete the survey um, to be entered to win a Sparks gift card. We would love your feedback so we can 
continue to deliver really quality programs. Um, our next Lunch with Leaders session will be on the 24th of February, um, featuring Taslim Kachra, who's a senior program officer at the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. So we hope to see you there. Nabra, thank you so much for your time. It was so lovely chatting with you today and hearing about your story and the arts and all the great things you do. Um, and we hope to chat with you again soon. Thank you. It was a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much. Thanks. All right. Bye, everyone. Thank you.